Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here bringing you another Wargaming painting tutorial. This time I'll be moving away from my usual guide where I paint a model from start to finish and will instead be focusing on a much more particular subject. With the new Orc releases right around the corner, I thought I would show you guys how to paint rusted metal, perfect vehicles cobbled together from scrap. To do this, I'll be using the new custom booster blaster along with a Citadel range of paints. Before we can begin painting, we first of all need to prime. I like to use a grey primer for this task, as it works as a good base coat to build upon for the both lighter and darker colours. You can use any miniature suitable grey primer that you have to hand for this. You'll also notice that in order to make painting a little easier, I've only partly assembled the miniature. To start things off, we need to choose a base coat, and for this I'll be going for Jacaro Orange, to give us that rusty orange colour. However, we first want to water it down slightly. Thinning out the paint will not only make it easier to work with, but if we apply a couple of coats, we'll be left with a much smoother finish. So take your paint and mix it with a little less water than paint. With your thinned mixture, apply the orange paint over the area you want to create the rust effect on. Don't worry about getting perfect coverage the first time, as this is why we thin down our mixture. Simply wait for the first layer to dry before applying another over the top. Repeat this process until you are happy with the results. With the base coat completed, we next want to add some texture and variance to the orange colour. To do this, we'll need an orangey brown that is a little darker than the base coat. XV88 is perfect for this. Instead of using a regular brush to apply this paint, instead we want to use some sponge or foam. I find that the foam found in blister packs is perfect for this. Rough up the edges of the foam a little by plucking at it with your fingers before dipping it in your paint. Remove most of the excess onto a piece of paper. Then, using a dabbing motion, apply the paint to the orange surface. You will see that this creates an ununiform pattern of flecks and splotches, perfect for representing the rough and varied texture of rust. With this particular step, you only want a subtle appearance of variance of shade, so don't worry if the paint doesn't completely stand out. Using the same sponge technique as before, we next want to apply some darker flecks of rust. Again, we want to maintain that reddish hue, so for this step, I'll be using Rhinox Hide as it's dark enough to contrast against the lighter colours we've used so far. This time, you want to apply the paint a little more heavily than last time. Create patches of dark rust as well as applying smaller flecks across the surface. To give the impression that the metal panel was once painted before the rust set in, we will next be adding some remnants of paint. The colour you use is entirely your choice, as this technique is what's important here. However, I would recommend using a base paint for ease of application. I'll personally be using the fang, as the blue colour will contrast nicely against the orange, and instead of thinning it with quite as much water as I did before, I'll instead just be mixing in a very small amount of water to improve the paint's flow. As the paint is likely to have become uneven through the formation of rust, it doesn't quite matter as much if the coverage is not smooth. When applying your colour of choice, try to keep the edges jagged and uneven, and create smaller satellite patches of paint next to your larger patches. Apply as many of these patches as you wish, but often less is more. In order to give the recessed areas of the rust some shading, we'll be using a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Apply this wash over the surface, ensuring it pools into the dips and corners in order to create some definition. Once this first layer has dried, you can apply some small patches of Agrax Earthshade over the rusty panels, which will help with the varied shades and colours of the rust. To add some further differentiation between the orange colours that we have on this miniature, we're next going to be applying a layer of Scrag Brown, but before we apply it to the surface, we want to mix it in with some Lamium Medium. Roughly equal parts Lamium Medium to Scrag Brown should work well for this step. Apply your mixture across the surface of the miniature. Don't worry about covering over some of the blue painted areas either, it'll just help to enhance that rusted colour. In this next step, we want to employ a slightly different technique than the ones we've used so far. Take an old frayed brush and dip it into some slightly watered down Troll Slayer Orange. Hold the bristles a few centimetres away from the surface, then, using a finger, pull back on the bristles and release so that the paint flicks onto the surface. Repeat this process from a few different distances in order to diversify the pattern of spray. Don't worry about getting these flecks on your paint patches either, as it will simply create the appearance of rust starting to form through the paint. 
Next, we want to add some wear and tear to the metal panels. This can be achieved by edge highlighting the edges using a metal paint. To create a more muted metal color, you can use lead belcher. However, I will personally be using the shinier Stormhost Silver. To apply, dip a fairly thin brush into your paint and drag it along the edges of the panels so as a fine silver line is left along them. Our final step requires a pencil or graphite powder if you have access to it. We'll be using this along the silver edges we painted in the last step to give the silver a more muted tone. If you're using a pencil, you can either run it along the edge or rub a small amount onto a piece of paper and use your finger to apply it instead. You can also use the pencil to create some small scratches in the surface of the panels as well. And here we have the completed custom booster blaster which has been painted using the same technique that I've demonstrated in this video. As you can see it can be easily applied to other areas of the model such as the crew's handguns and tools as well as other vehicle areas like the exhaust vents. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video such as my everlasting wet palette. If you enjoyed this shorter, more focused type video, do let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you would like to support me in making these videos. If you have any questions or just like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.